Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore, with music by Claude Sweet. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Today, there are many different brands of margarine in the food stores. Here's a simple test for flavor your own family can make. Buy Kraft's parquet margarine, spread it on piping hot toast, and then compare parquet's fine flavor and aroma with any other spread you may have used. You see, heat brings out the flavor of foods. So notice especially how fresh, how delicate, how satisfying this delicious flavor is when parquet melts into tempting golden brown slices of toast. Prove to your own satisfaction how good parquet tastes, and then you'll know why millions prefer parquet to any other brand. Remember, parquet is a vitamin-fortified food with 9,000 units of vitamin A guaranteed in every pound. It's tops in food energy value, too. So buy parquet, the delicious spread millions prefer to any other brand. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Now let's join our friend the great Gildersleeve, whom we meet this evening as a member of the Summerfield School Board. In this capacity, he's attending a meeting of the Parent Teachers Association in the auditorium of the Summerfield Grammar School with Miss Eve Goodwin as chairman. Meeting, he says. Well, it would be a meeting, except that so far nobody but Gildersleeve and Miss Goodwin have showed up. What time is it, Throckmorton? Time? Uh, 8.15, Eve. What time is the meeting supposed to start? At 8. Wouldn't it be awful if nobody came? It would suit me fine. I'll tell you what, Eve. Let's lock the doors right now so nobody can get in. <laughs> Fuck, Morton, what on earth for? Then you and I could play school. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. I'll be the naughty boy and you make me stay after. How about it? Oh, don't be childish, Throck Morton. Childish? Don't you even want to know what I did that was naughty? I wrote something naughty on the blackboard. All right. What was it? I love teacher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please, can I stay after school, teacher? No, Throckmorton. Go home and write out the multiplication table 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here, Eve. Nobody's coming. We know Judge Hooker's coming because we announced him as our principal speaker. We sent out over 200 postcards. Announcing Judge Hooker would speak? Of course. Well, no wonder nobody's here. <laughs> People don't want to listen to that old goat bleeding at them. The judge is highly respected in the community, Throckmorton. He has a great many admirers. Yeah, and they're all sitting right here waiting for him to speak. Count them. Well, I don't understand it. When you send a... There's someone at the door now. If it's a fan of Judge Hooker's, I want to see him. Well, by George, it is at that. Hello, Judge. Hi, Gildy. Good evening, gracious lady. Good evening, Judge. Well, where's our audience? I was just going to ask you that, Judge. You're the main attraction this evening, I believe. Maybe nobody wants to hear that speech of yours anymore. The law as the bulwark of freedom. My speech has nothing to do with tonight's attendance. The YMCA is giving a minstrel show tonight to raise money for a new pool table. That's where everybody's gone. Oh? Well, that's what we got to compete with then. Entertainment. Yeah, but how can we compete? Well, Judge, I, I think your speech might have been a little closer to the subject of education. Just what I've been trying to say, Eve. Now, for instance, I might give a little talk on child psychology. You! I'm the authority on child psychology around this town. Juvenile delinquency, I call it. I just read a magazine article about it. So did I. Oh, please, Horace. Throckmorton. He raised his voice to me. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Eve, but Gildersleeve is so irritating. What? Throckmorton. <laughs> now, Horace, there's nothing to fight about. You both want to talk on child psychology. Now, why can't we have a debate? Debate? By George. Now, that's something people would come to hear. Uh, have you definite views on the subject, Throckmorton? Have I? I told you I read this article. And you, Judge? I can put my views on juvenile delinquency in a nutshell. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Yeah, I might have known that's how you'd look at it, Judge. Kid steals a pack of chewing gum and you'd send him up for five years. <laughs> I'd do nothing of the kind. On the other hand, I wouldn't just give him a pat on the back. Shh. 
It's old dodos like you that make juvenile delinquency a problem. And it's ignorant boneheads like you that make it more difficult. Gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen, hold your fire. We'll stage the debate a week from tonight. And may the best man win. I'm a cinch. <laughs> Leroy? Yeah? Where's that little magazine that was lying around the parlor yesterday? Magazine Digest. Yesterday? It's been kicking around here for days. Now when I want it, I can't find it. Yep, I know how it is, Unc. The philosopher, even. You haven't seen the magazine? Had an article on child psychology in it. Nope. Did you ask Bertie? She hadn't seen it. Oh, well, I guess I can remember enough of it. Let's see. Maybe if I could make a sort of an outline. Haven't you anything to do, Leroy? Not a thing. Well, find something. You make me nervous just sitting there while I'm trying to work. Okay. Leroy! Leroy! Somebody calling you, Leroy? Yeah. Well, answer him. <laughs> he gods, there's a kid for you to play with. He's not a kid. He's just a little boy. Well, play with him anyway. Leroy! Leroy's in here, Sonny. Come on in. Oh, for corn's sake. He's too little. Hello, Leroy. What you doing? Nothing. Manners, Leroy. I don't believe I know you, young man. What's your name? Craig. He's Craig Bullard. Oh, another one of the Bullard family. Well, well, I've met your brother Marshall, and I've met your dad. And you're Craig. Well, quite a family. Let's play, Leroy. Play what? My father gave me this magic trick. But I don't know how it works. Magic? Let's see. Hey, this is the Mahatma's magic box. Cost eight seventy-five. How does it work? Well, I'll show you how it works, Craig. Now look, you sit down here on the sofa, and I'll show you the trick. Holy cow! The Mahatma's magic box, eight seventy-five. You be careful with Craig's expensive trick, Leroy. I can handle it. Look, Craig. You see, I take this quarter and I open the door of the Mahatma's magic box. I place the quarter inside and I close the door. Now the quarter's in there, isn't it? It's in there, all right, isn't it? I don't know. You just saw me put it in. You can hear it. You hear it? Yes, I hear it. But now I open the door of the Mahatma's box, and we do not see the quarter. Open the other door. The other door? Oh. We open the other door, but the quarter has vanished. You moved it. Open the other door. The other door? We open the other door? No quarter. You moved it again. Open both doors. I have opened both doors. I open this door, no quarter. I open the other door, no quarter there either. Open both doors at the same time. What? Open both doors at the same time. <laughs> he got it. Oh, both doors at the same time. Very well. But where's the quarter? Well, I'll be. Was it really in there, Leroy? Well, sure. You saw me put the quarter in, didn't you, Craig? I thought so. Where did it go? That's a magic. Uh, look, Craig, this is a kind of a tough trick to learn. How'd you like to trade it for something easier? Leroy. <laughs> What's the matter? No swindling, please. Oh, I won't jip him. You want to trade this for something easier, Craig? Okay. I wonder if you and Craig could do your trading upstairs, my boy. I'm trying to do some work here. Oh, sure. Come on, Craigie, old boy. I'll show you all my magic stuff. He's going to swindle him. I'd rather he did it where I can't hear the details. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, let's see here. I suppose Hooker will have a lot of statistics. That kind of stuff. Maybe I should throw in a few. Uh... <clears throat> It may surprise my esteemed opponent to learn that in six large cities where corporal punishment was abolished last year, uh, juvenile delinquency fell off uh, 19%. I wonder if you'll know I made that up. Oh, my goodness. Craig! Now, now, what's the matter here? He took my magic box away from me. I did not. He took it away. Leroy, let me have the facts. I didn't take it. We traded. He said he'd trade the box for my Egyptian changing bag. Is that right, Craig? Are you willing to trade your box for the bag? The bag is torn. I want my box. <laughs> is the bag torn, Leroy? Just a small tear. Hardly shows at all. Outside of that, it's in perfect condition. How much is the bag worth? Uh, I don't remember exactly. 
But it wasn't worth any 875 brand new, was it? No. But they're hard to get now. Or they will be one of these days. <laughs> they might stop making them. Leroy, give the boy his box. You run upstairs with Leroy, Craig, and you'll get your box back. Thank you. I'll tell you what I'll do, Craig. If you don't like the changing bag, I've got a set of Chinese rings. Upstairs, Leroy. Okie doke. I think you like the things, Craig. Leroy certainly sticks to the thing when he wants to. Yes, sir, there's a lot of bulldog gilders leaving that boy. <laughs> well, come on, bulldog. Get your teeth in old Judge Hooker here. Let's see. I was throwing statistics at him. Oh, yes. The average rainfall... Craig, for Pete's sake, be reasonable. I want my box. Leroy, give him his box. He took my magic box away from me. I did not. It was a trade. Gosh, Uncle, he made the trade. The changing bag and the Chinese rings. Well, that sounds fair enough. What's wrong with that? The bag is torn and the rings are rusty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of this, Leroy. Stop trying to get Craig's box away from him and just play nicely. Play what? Go out in the backyard and play catch or something sensible and healthy. Can you catch a ball, Craig? Sure. He can't, Unc. He's a butterfinger. Sir. Well, teach him. Ye gods, I'm busy. <laughs> suppose I have to write out every syllable I'm going to say there, as long as I have the general idea. Now what? Some more kids, I suppose. Come in. Are you Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, uh, yes, I am. Uh, pardon me, I thought it was someone I knew at the door. I'm Mrs. Bullard from across the street. Well, well, this is indeed a pleasure. Now I've met the whole family. There's a youngster of yours around here somewhere playing with my nephew. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I thought I saw Craig come over here. Yes, he's here. Seems like a mighty nice boy, too. I'm glad if he's made a good impression, because I, I wanted to ask you to do us a favor. Uh, do me a favor. Anything at all, Mrs. Bullard, anything at all. Well, I've just managed to make an appointment at the hairdresser's, and... I wondered if I could leave Craig over here for the next couple of hours. Is that all? <laughs> well, I thought you were going to ask a real favor. Craig is having such a good time with Leroy. That's nothing, Mrs. Bullard. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've got to run now, but I'll pick up Craig as soon as I get back. Don't have him on your mind. Well, pleasant woman. Seems a little young for Bullard. <laughs> Mr. Gilsley. Huh? Oh, what is it, Bertie? I guess I'll be going now. Going? Going where? Did you forget? You told me I could take this afternoon off, and it's 12 o'clock right now. By George, Bertie, I had forgotten. Well, go along, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'll be back around 4.30. Goodbye, Miss Gilsley. Goodbye, Bertie. Have a good... Uh, oh, Bertie. Something you want, Miss Gilsley? On your way, just ask Leroy to come in here, will you? Leroy ain't here. He left with Piggy about a half hour ago. He left? What about that little boy that was with him? He's just sitting out there in the backyard by himself. Wait till I catch that, Leroy. All right, Bertie, thanks anyway. You're welcome, Mr. Gilsey. Goodbye. Goodbye. Leroy has the manners of a pig. Well, maybe I'll get a chance to do some work on him this summer. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, what is it, Craig? I'm hungry. I want some lunch. <laughs> Bertie! Uh, Bertie! Confounded Craig, why didn't you think of that five minutes ago? <laughs> Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. If there are any enthusiastic bread eaters in our listening audience, here's where you come in for a bit of special attention. It's you folks who enjoy bread, rolls, pancakes, and waffles who really appreciate fine flavor in a spread. And that's why so many homemakers are serving parquet margarine, the spread with a flavor that's truly delicious. Parquet is served daily in millions of American homes. In fact, millions prefer parquet to any other brand. So if you haven't already tried parquet... Get a package from a dealer who sells you craft food products and give those bread eaters in your family a real flavor treat. You'll be adding good nourishment to meals, too, because parquet is high in food energy value, and every single pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So buy parquet, the delicious spread millions prefer to any other brand. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft.
Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, who finds himself with Bertie away, faced with the problem of providing lunch for himself and his little guest from across the street. Well, come on, Craig. Let's go out to the kitchen and see what's there, shall we? What say? I'm hungry. <laughs> I know you're hungry. <laughs> We're going to get you a nice big lunch. All the things you like, too. What's your favorite? Ice cream. <laughs> yes, I know. But that would hardly do for lunch now, would it? What would you like for lunch? Ice cream. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> now, you know as well as I do that we don't eat ice cream for lunch. Now, let's see what we have here. Well, we have raspberry jam, if you like that. Bread and jam. And here's a can of tuna. Mmm. You could have a tuna sandwich. Now, which would you like? Ice cream. <laughs> now, look, Craig, let's be reasonable, shall we? I've got work to do, and I've got to get back to it. We haven't any ice cream, and if we had some, you wouldn't be allowed to have it. Now, we've got all this nice stuff here. Make up your mind. Which is it going to be? What does your mother usually give you for lunch? Ice cream. All right, come on, we'll get some ice cream. <laughs> Go ahead. Why are we going in here? Because you wouldn't eat what we had to offer at home. Is this where they have the ice cream? Yes. Now go ahead. Well, hello, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Who's your young friend? This is Rumson Bullard, younger boy. Say hello to Mr. Peavy, Craig. How do you do? Oh, how do you do, Sonny? <laughs> Mannerly little fellow, isn't he? Well, yes, his manners are all right. <laughs> And what can I do for you today, young man? Well, Craig and I dropped in for a bite of lunch. Climb up on the stool there, Craig. Can you make it? Well, I should say so. My, you're a good climber, aren't you? I can climb trees, too. How'd you like to go and climb one? <laughs> uh, Craig's mother's gone out for a while, Peavy, so I get to take care of him. Well, now, isn't that nice? Uh-huh. <laughs> and what are you going to have for lunch, Sonny? Ice cream. Oh, but ice cream is for dessert. What are you going to have to start with? Ice cream. There's no use arguing with the child, Peavy. I've tried it. Just give him the ice cream. Well, perhaps you didn't put it to him the right way, Mr. Gildersleeve. A lot of people get impatient with children. That never works. No. You see, uh, Sonny, we don't start with ice cream. Oh, dear, no, because that would spoil our appetite, wouldn't it? It's no use, Peavy. Now, if you want ice cream, you'll have to eat something else first. You know, a sandwich or something. You understand? I tell you, it's no use. Now, we have all kinds of sandwiches here. Chopped eggs, Swiss cheese, tuna, tomato. I'd like tuna. Tuna it is. <laughs> Why, you look... I offered him a tuna sandwich at home, and he said he didn't want it. Well, perhaps the boy changed his mind, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's everybody's privilege. Huh. Now, there's your sandwich, Sonny. Want me to unwrap it for you? I can do it. Well, you're a big boy, aren't you? Fine lad. Fine lad. You see, Mr. Gildersleeve, you just have to know how to handle them. Don't forget my ice cream. No, indeed. Ice cream coming right up. Yes, dear. I've always found that reason works pretty well with children. Well, I'm not against it, you understand. I always try a reason when everything else fails. But you can't count on it. <laughs> Ah, oh, there's your dessert, Sonny. Thank you. Sandwich first, remember? All right, George, I'll say one thing for you, Peavy. You certainly have a way with kids. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, you have, definitely. I argued with him till I was black in the face. All you have to do is speak to him. Well, it's really very simple, Mr. Gildersleeve. You have to remember that children are people, that's all, just like you or me. You know, I'm glad to hear you say that, Peavy. I'm taking part in a debate with Judge Hooker tonight before the Parent Teachers Association. Yeah, I saw that in the paper. I was beginning to think maybe I was on the wrong side. Now, the judge, he thinks the only way to handle children is to get them into juvenile court and send them up for five years. Well, the judge has never had any children of his own. Just between you and me, I don't think he knows anything about it. <laughs> He's going to find that out this evening. I'm through. Can I have some water? Why, Craig, you've eaten your ice cream. And never touched your sandwich. Listen, you. Now, just a minute, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, Craig, you and I had an understanding, didn't we? You were to eat the sandwich first. But I didn't want the sandwich. Well, that makes no difference. We had an agreement. So I think you ought to eat the sandwich now. But I'm not hungry. I told you you wouldn't be hungry if you ate the ice cream first. 
But I'm going to have to ask you to eat the sandwich just the same. But I don't want to. Listen, do you want me to tell your mother you eat that sandwich? <laughs> but I'll get sick. Well, you ordered it, now eat it. <laughs> Come along, Craig. I'm afraid we've annoyed Mr. Peavy. Spoiled little devil. If we were mine, I'd... Well, but he isn't. Uh, uh, Now, let's see here. Where is it? Craig, have you been... Oh, here it is. Let's see. I say, uh... Uh, <clears throat> Miss Goodwin, my honored opponent, Judge Hooker, fellow members of the PTA. Where's Leroy? Where's Leroy? <laughs> I've told you, Craig, I don't know where Leroy is. I suspect he's hiding. I want Leroy to play with me. Well, he can't play with you. He isn't here. When will he be back? I don't know. Where did he go? For the hundredth time, I don't know where he went. I want him to play with me. <laughs> Uh, look, Craig, I'm trying to work here. It's very important. I've got just half an hour to finish this. Now, you go upstairs to Leroy's room and find something to do, or by George, I'll... Well, you go upstairs, that's all. I want Leroy to come with me. Leroy isn't here, ye gods! Now what? If it isn't one thing, it's another. Well... Mrs. Bullard, so you're back. Oh, I must apologize. I'm afraid I'm terribly late. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> Come in. Is Craig here? Yes, indeed. He's been here every minute. Oh, Craig. Craigie, darling. Your mother's here. Come, Craig. Oh, I do hope he hasn't been too much trouble. Trouble? Not a bit. He's been a perfect little angel. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to hear it. Come, darling. Yes, indeed. Craig and I have gotten to be great friends. Haven't we, Craig? (laughs) Haven't we? (laughs) Mr. Gildersleeve asked you a question, dear. (laughs) Cat's got his tongue, I guess. Well, he's probably tired. Had a big day. Yes. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I I can't thank you enough. Oh, don't mention it. Glad to have him. Glad to have him any time. We had more fun, didn't we, Craig? (laughs) <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Give my regards to your husband. You must come over when we get settled. Oh, I will. Be delighted. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, maybe I can get something done around here for a change. <laughs> Where the devil was I? Hmm. Maybe I'm going at this thing wrong. If I give all my arguments at the start... The judge will refute them. But if I just stall and save all my arguments for the rebuttal, he won't get a chance to answer them. <laughs> the old goat, that'll burn him up. Who's that? Leroy? No, it's me. Oh, hello, Marjorie. Come on in, Marshall. Uncle Mort, you know Marshall. Oh, yes, yes. How do you do, sir? Your little brother just spent the whole day here. <laughs> oh, that's so? Yeah. Over here, Marshall. Have you got the record? Yes. Is there a needle in that thing? Uh, Marjorie. Yes? If you don't mind, I'm doing a little work in here, so if you're planning to play the phonograph... Oh, that's all right. You won't bother us. <laughs> <laughs> well, rather than run any risk of that, my dear, I think perhaps I'll retire to my study. Oh, you're not disturbing us, Mr. Gildersleeve. Stick around. Yes, yeah, stick around, Uncle Mort. You'll love this. It's called Sad Sack. Play it, Marshall. Shh. I give up. I give up. What's the matter, Uncle Moore? Everything. I've been trying all day to get two minutes to myself here, but no. And this is the last straw. To the to the when Bernie comes in, tell her I'll have my dinner served alone in my study. What's the matter with him? I don't know. He gets like that. Play it, Marshall. Yeah. Hi, right, George. The judge is right about kids. You ought to send them up for five years. Everyone. <laughs> no manners, no conscience. Come in. 
Oh. <laughs> you can take the dishes, Bertie. I'm through. It ain't that. Miss Goodwin and Judge Hook are here to take you to the school meeting. Gee, what'll I tell Eve? I'm not prepared. Well, they... Oh, coming, Judge. I haven't got much time. Meeting's call for eight. Be right with you, Horace. Well, hello, Eve. Good evening, Doc Morton. Hope you're in good form this evening, Gildy, because I'm prepared to give you the trouncing of your life in this debate. <laughs> well, I'm afraid there isn't going to be any debate this evening, Judge. Why not? Because you can't have a debate when two men are on the same side. What? Throckmorton, I don't understand. You mean that now, all of a sudden, you're in favor of corporal punishment for children? Eve, if you'd spent the day I've just spent, you'd be in favor of capital punishment. <laughs> oh, well, really, with all those people down there at the meeting, what are we going to do? Now, don't get excited, Eve. I've got a better idea. Now, who wants to listen to a dull old debate? Do you judge? Do I? No. Entertainment. That's what they want. Now, I've got an idea that's going to be great. We can bring it up before the meeting tonight. What's that, Gildy? Why don't we put on a minstrel show? The Parent Teachers Association? Sure. What a perfectly awful idea. Well, I don't know, Eve. It might be kind of fun. Sure it would. Who's that fat lady I done seen you with last night, Jay? That was no lady. That was my wife. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's the best way to raise spinach? With a fork? Any fool knows that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Judge, uh, I'll be down to meet you in a taxi, honey. Better, I better be, be ready about half past eight. Oh, no, oh honey, no. don't be late. I'm going to meet you What do you got there, Leroy? Oh, I got a new way to do the trick, Unc. Is that the Mahatma's magic box? Yeah, I traded it from Craig. So you finally got it away from him, eh? What'd you give him for it, Leroy? I gave him a pretty nice deal, Unc. What did you give him? Well, it might not seem so good to you, but a kid would love it. What was it? A solid glass doorknob. And a 20 cents in cash. Well, a deal is a deal, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Leroy. Good night, everybody. <laughs> music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Why worry, homemakers, just because some of your favorite foods are scarce? Here's a very special kind of cheese food that's been helping women to make an endless variety of point-thrifty main dish treats. It's Pabstet, P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T. Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food of a hundred uses. Pabstet is rich in mellow cheddar cheese flavor, melts quickly into a smooth golden cheese sauce that gives a grand flavor lift to macaroni, vegetables, eggs, chicken, and fish. Pabstet also blends temptingly into Welsh rabbits and soufflés, slices neatly when chilled, spreads and toasts to perfection for sandwiches and snacks. And it's downright nourishing and easy to digest. Buy both delicious varieties, golden cheddar Pabstet in the yellow package and pimento Pabstet in the red package. Ask for Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food of a hundred uses. This is the National Broadcast.